portals are mysterious doorways to travel through time and space, made out of energetic fields, frequencies, plasmas. The portals can be natural or man-made. They can be on planets. They can be out in space. They can be underwater. Sometimes portals form in connection to wormholes, and they're all linked to the cosmic web, which is the highway of space and time travel in all the universes and the multiverse. It's interconnected by tunnels of energy, light, encoded frequency, and different pathways and corridors of space travel. In the cosmic web filled with life, light, frequency, and portal travel through it, connecting to different planets and energy fields, galaxies like the Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy are teeming with portals on various planets. And portals can be circular, portals can be round, square, triangular, octagonal. It depends on the shape of the portal, how it's created, the energy it's encoded and infused with hieroglyphics, glyphs, images, stars, suns, motifs of lions can often be found on portals as sigils that are activating the sequence codes on the portal, numbers, letters, ancient language, those are the dial-up frequencies of dialing up the portal energy to go elsewhere, somewhere else, to transport you energetically once you walk through the portal, on the planet or off-planet. Portals have different spans of how far they can, how far they can transport you and where they can deposit you. So even different ranges of portal travel in terms of distances long distance, short distance, if there's crystalline energies encoded into the portal itself, it could travel much further out in the galaxy where it can transport you. Hi, it's Eliana, and today we're going to talk about ancient portals and discerning the truth about artifacts. Recently, I had come across some images of what I think is an interesting portal, and it has quite a story with it. So this is a purported ancient portal that was unearthed in the city of Samarkand, which is located in the southeastern part of Uzbekistan. It is said that this interesting portal was discovered by several of the German archaeologists in the year 1903. There seem to be carvings on the portal that are similar to the designs that were depicted on the Stargate SG-1 portal sequences in the TV show. So these types of portals do exist on various planets, but a relic of this portal was never found before on Earth in an archaeological excavation. It's an, intricate S, S, it's an intricate CGI drawing depicting portals. So drawings can often come from sketches and plans that turn into CGI for different graphics, for different depictions of things. And there was an artist who took a lot of time to do this intricate portal work, who drew this and then turned it into CGI. And for the most part, it looks very real. It has elements of people from 1903, how they're dressed, how they look. They're doing excavation work, archeological work. But you see the portal on the left-hand side. You can see that it's not really part of the scene because it stands apart. It doesn't blend in well enough to the archaeological dig site. Yes, there were archaeological dig sites 
in that area of Uzbekistan and other sites where Aztec portal stuff was discovered in areas of the Mayans and the Aztecs in Mexico and other parts of the United States where actual portal depictions are true. And this is similar to that. It strives to mimic that. But it's not a natural portal that you would find in Uzbekistan. It just stands out. It's lighter than everything else in the picture. And the blending, you can tell there needed to be a lot more blending done. And it wouldn't be standing right on the seam of an edge of where the archaeological dig is. It would There would be more space between the seams of what the archaeologists already have unearthed and dug up. This thing would have more clearance space. It wouldn't be on the seam on the edge. So the artist could have taken more time to properly blend the sequencing of how they inserted the portal. I'm glad they didn't because it's a good looking portal and the energy frequency that's coming off of it, that's real. That is an actual portal that the artist drew. And you can actually create portals by drawing something, by depicting a sequence of ingredients that create an actual portal and that infuses cosmic energy into it and it can activate a portal just from a drawing or a sketch, a CGI sketch. You can create your own portal tech through sacred geometry objects, drawing objects, creating symbols. So the symbols in Stargate S G1 in that portal in the TV show, those are actual symbols from portals that are active on different planets. Such portals do exist. And this type of this type of a portal also existed in Sumeria on Earth, in actually the Middle East, but not in Uzbekistan. More in the Middle East. I've seen similar types of portals. So the depiction of this portal is accurate. It does exist, but it wasn't from the 1903 dig, archeological dig. This is a author who writes nonfiction as well. She's an artist and an author who created this portal and put it in into an actual dig site where a dig site was in 1903 in Uzbekistan, but they didn't find portals in that site. More of like Middle East, Sumeria, they had those portals, they did. So I did put this portal through a heat signature scan and I did find energetic signatures of portal energy, which we will be discussing in the next slide. So this portal is real, even though it's not an archaeological relic that was unearthed in Uzbekistan, the portal itself is very much real because it has portal energies. It has all the elements of if that portal was actually standing there in front of you, made out of granite or something else with those hieroglyphics on it and glyphs and all the parts of the lion, the sun, the stargate, those are all ingredients of an active portal activation sequence. To have a working portal, whether it's made from metal or granite or some other material, natural material or elements not of the earth, these types, these types of portals do exist and they work. And they, some of them have been found in the Middle East in Iraq and other places, archeological sites. And even in Egypt, in certain locations. So these portals do exist, that's real. It's just, this was a very good effort to depict a dig site where 
the, uh, the artist said, yeah, my grandfather unearthed the portal, but they didn't. So it's still real, but not in the sense that it came from that archeological site in 1903. So when we're looking at pictures and we're examining something to see if it's real or not, use discernment. Something that isn't blended in correctly into the background, you can spot the, the inconsistencies in the color, in the lines, in the corners of the blade, of the blending, the shading. So the blending areas and the shading, those could be telltale signs if something isn't completely blended into the background. It's probably not real edges, corners, and AI artwork right now can look so real. We wouldn't know if it's the real thing or not because it's gotten to the point where it's so real. You think it might be a real portal that somebody put in a dig site because the artwork can depict it that well. If somebody is a professional artist, they can work with something like Mid Journey or something else that can actually create a perfect portal blend. And what they create can actually be a portal, portal artwork that activates a portal to go somewhere else because it might incorporate sigils, hieroglyphics, glyphs that activate a portal, even through a drawing. Portals are interesting. They have high frequency magnetic energy if you draw a portal and you know what you're doing, you can activate a portal to go through to other places in the universe because portals are not just physical things made of metallic components or granite or other substances that have crystalline matter in them. Portals can be drawn. Portals can be activated with proper energetic frequency in the hieroglyphics. If you know what you're mixing as your portal ingredients, you can create active portals, but you also have to know how to close them. So they're not open all the time where anyone or anything can just come in. You have to put guard protection sequence on your portals to make sure that anything not of the highest good does not come in through the portal. So it's a very unique thing to create a portal, but it's also very comes with it with a very high degree of responsibility to make sure your portal is not hijacked and nobody can just enter in or leave as they wish. You have to put safeguards and protections on your portal to make sure that uh, it's a portal only you can access, that it's guarded, that it's protected, and that it can be closed at any moment for your own safety and protection. It's actually not a good idea to keep active open portals in places, in homes and closets, because portals are high energy octave energetic frequencies with crystalline matter in them. So it is in plasma. Plasma is also part of portals because it's energy and frequency that transcends beyond time and space. Portals can have long ranges where they can transport you or somebody else through these energetic portals that are drawn or physically discovered. So it's a high responsibility to work with them. And you need to know what you're doing when you're creating portals. I accidentally created a portal through ancient dragon symbols and sigils when I was studying magic. We were actually being taught how to create portals but I accidentally created a portal that was very powerful beyond what I was supposed to do and create. And um, I, I was just learning dragon sigils and symbols and dragon magic back then. So my portal, it took me two years to figure out how to actually close it. It was a great responsibility of learning, adjusting, and figuring out how those dragon symbols worked worked properly to close that portal. Because once you create something, you need to know how it works 
What were, what were the magical energetic properties of the sigils, symbols, glyphs, hieroglyphics that created that portal drawing that gave it the energy to be an active portal sequence to go to different places and have others visit you as well? So that, that portal, uh, I would say, was in my house for a long time. And it took a while to figure out how it worked, what I did to create it, what I needed to do to close it, because I wanted to be responsible and not have an active portal in my closet. And it was in my closet in one of the upstairs rooms of the house. And some psychics even said, do you know that there's a portal in your closet? We can sense the portal. You, you need to manage it better. And I'm like, yes, I know. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So now the portal is closed. The artwork of that portal I still have, very much so. I did not destroy the artwork of the portal. It is a reminder for me what I worked with and what I did, that I know how to magically create portals with energy, with frequency, with sacred geometry. That's something I know how to do and have done but I take it very seriously and I don't create active portals anymore. Unless the Pleiadians take me through a portal somewhere or an Aya of the L race takes me through a portal somewhere and I know it's a secure, safe portal to go through and work with. I check its frequency and energy to make sure it's safe with what I sense and I could sense that this portal in this image is real, but not in the sense that it was a phys physical discovery from an archaeological dig site that was retrieved. Real portal just created through artwork and imbued with a lot of portal energy. So it's, it's an active portal. While the portal itself was created through CGI. It's still an ancient portal. There is an element of truth that was disclosed in Stargate SG-1 that portals with ancient language inscriptions and images of the sun and the lion carry the frequency to open portal locations to other planets since the portals are encoded with energetic frequencies to activate the dial-up connections through the cosmic web to communicate with similar portal gates on other planets in the Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy in the solar systems. This portal is real because it carries a strong magnetic cosmic frequency of activation sequences that are in precise conjunction and alignment with the cosmic web as well as portal activations on different planets. And the cosmic web is the energetic highway, highway traveling system in the cosmos. So it is the highway energetic traveling system in the, co in the cosmos that has different pockets and tunnel systems of energy and frequency through which portals open up and connect to the different planets from Earth to Mars, Mars to Earth, Venus to Mars, etc., etc. We have something called the cosmic web, the cosmic highway of time and space travel, energetic connections and tunnel systems of portal energies connecting to wormholes in the cosmic web, opening up beside planets, wormholes, portals, energy, opening up, closing up, and it does have a time sequence dilation that is connected to these hieroglyphics on portals. And this particular portal, even though it was created through CGI, it is very much coded energetically as portal sequencing by the frequencies of the colors. The yellow, the green, the orange, the blue, wow, totally portal coded. And the lion and the sun, portal connectors, high frequency portal connectors with ancient hieroglyphics. Looks a little Sumerian, 
looks a little like ancient language because it is so it is high vibrational portal energy sequence coded as a portal as an active portal from the vibrational frequency that we can see in these images because it has a heat signature it has a frequency an active living frequency of portal energies connecting to the cosmic web to the cosmic highway of time travel space travel portal travel through wormholes and the portals connecting to different planets so thank you so much and namaste